Okay, American Idol, top 24, the 12 guys, season 10. Top 5 go on. Judges get a wild card pick um, here. I'm just going to go down through, and then I'll tell you the five that I think are pretty much a dead lock. Uh, Junebug, Clayton Jamboa, Superstitious. Um, it doesn't look like he is, he feels like he belongs or something. It took him a while. Even J-Lo said, uh, you know, it, it, you got to work it out or whatever. Um, he finally relaxed at the end. There's nothing really wrong vocally here. Um, Giovanni, Giovanni uh, I always screw up his name, Barreto, the Albi. You know, I don't, I don't think that's a good song choice for this stage of the competition at all. And uh, he's not going to be back next week. Jordan Dorsey, uh, the low range did not work for me at one bit. Um, I'm confused by this performance. I really think uh, it was a bad song choice, too, because J-Lo said, you know, do you want to be like Usher? And he was like, no, I'm not Usher. And uh, that was really sad. And remember, everything I'm saying is uh, based on my experiences as, number one, uh, with a, I'm a music teacher, vocal. I have uh, been doing so for 14 years. I have a master's in music education. I've been doing, you know, musical stuff for years and just performance-oriented curriculum for years. So I know a little bit about singing, in case uh, you want me to tell me to shut the bleep up. Just saying. Remember, these are just my opinions. Um, Tim Halperin, I don't know the song very well, but uh, it was boring, you know. I, I think it's a bad song choice. It doesn't show off everything that I had known. Even the even uh, Dog said that, and I, I thought it was bad song choice. Brett Lowenstor, and this little kid, I remember he's, he's young, but uh, his hair was definitely distracting, okay? Um, nothing really wrong with the voice. The hairography, it was great. Uh, he was he was himself, though. A lot of these other people earlier were kind of not being themselves, um, which was very strange. But you always have that at this top 12. You always get those that stay true to themselves and so those that kind of fall away, okay? And mostly the ones that stay true to themselves are the ones that go on. Hint, hint. Um, but he did have some pitch problems, and his voice is just teeny, like mousy. I don't know. Uh, James Durbin, first time probably on American Idol that Judas Priest has ever been sung. Another thing coming. I love how he made this his own. His insane voice. Um, personally, uh, I, I have, I'll say something about them later. Uh, Robbie Rosen, Angel. Um, he sounded like himself doing the ballad. I do not like this version. Um, some of the notes on the falsetto were just icky. Um, but he tried to make it his own. You know, it was definitely not like... The, I mean, Sarah McLaughlin version, everybody knows that because that's the song. I did like the up-tempo version, but I did not like the way he was singing it. It's kind of be curious, dude. Like, the, the Letter From Home song, I never really knew it before. Um, it's, been a, it's been a long time since there's been a true, true, true country person. And he's like old-school country. You know, I want to hear him sing, yeah, you never even call me by my name. That's a great song for him, but, you know, uh, it's just natural, young country guy, young and awesome. Uh, Stefano Langone, very charismatic. He made me happy when he sang. He just made me, like, smile, you know, and, uh. I love it. I love the the face that J Lo made when he uh, kind of screwed up a, a falsetto note, and uh, but she didn't say anything about it. But you could see the reaction on the on the you know the replay, and she called him a beast. Uh, Paul McDonald, Maggie May. I like his voice, but man, he just he looked like he was on something. Man, he he almost looks like Bradley Cooper tonight, except skinnier and uh, stuff. I don't know. Uh, nothing wrong with his voice, just I didn't like his performance. Jacob Lusk, oh my god, this dude is insane. Uh, you know, chair is not a chair. He's, you know, very unique, very powerful. Um, I was really happy about him doing Luther Vandross, and I, I really agreed with what uh, both both what they said about him, um, Dog and, uh, you know, J-Lo, adulation from all of them. And Casey Abrams... Um, love this version of I Put a Spell on You. He looked like, he scared me a little bit, didn't he, at first? And then he was like, you know, because you're mine and stuff. But if you don't know Screaming Jay Hawkins, man, um, that's, that's just, he lived up to his name. And, uh, I loved the ending where he controlled it to show that he's not just this 
this screaming, you know, guy with all this stuff. But um, I, I really like that performance. All right, here are the five people going on, based on my BS opinion. All right, James Durbin, okay, definitely. Scotty McCreary, Stefano, Stefano Langone, uh, Jacob Lusk, and Casey Abrams. Those are the five. Um, if, as far as, like, a, uh, you know, a wild card... I think uh, Robbie would probably get picked, even though this performance I thought was bad. Robbie or Tim, because they they they're younger and they they uh, have a lot of potential and stuff. So I bet you they'll they'll choose a younger person because this is all about the younger person. Um, everybody else I think is has no chance whatsoever. That's just my opinion. Um, but those people and you you kind of you got a metal dude, you got a country dude. You got a R&B Latin dude, you got a gospel dude, and you got a freak show dude that can just, the blues dude. Every single one of these five guys is specialized, you know, into, or, or really does one specific style of music amazing. So that's why I say what I say, and I'll be back tomorrow for the ladies. Peace out, Girl Scout. Let me know what you think in a comment or video response. Do you agree? Do you think somebody did better? Did I miss something? You know, let's get this interactive, yo. Word.